The Sea Truck is one of the Subnautica Universe's most versatile vehicles. Used by researchers, miners and survivors alike, the Sea Truck allows for the combination of home comforts, deep sea exploration and getting stuck in tight spaces into one neat package. Like many of Subnautica's smaller vehicles, the Sea Truck is a one-person operated sea and spacecraft that could be used in any number of dangerous environments. The Sea Truck consists of an individual cabin module that can be used for scouting and quicker maneuverability and a number of modules that can be towed behind it to increase its functionality and comfort, and is similar to a truck in real life, full of useful tools for exploring the ocean. The Sea Truck comes equipped with a large reinforced glass window for a good view of whatever is about to eat you, and also includes a retractable chair for all your home away from home comfort and needs. The Sea Truck is powered through two power cells on the top of the cabin module, and this is the only part of the vehicle to have its own power and oxygen supply, which will automatically refill its crew's oxygen tanks should they be depleted. If the cabin is detached from the rest of the Sea Truck's towed modules, these modules will be unpowered and any system inside them requiring electricity will not function, and there will also be a distinct lack of any breathable air. The Sea Truck's power supply can be charged by docking the vehicle inside a moon pool, which will automatically detach all towed modules. This can also be achieved by parking the vehicle in a dedicated Sea Truck dock, which will charge the vehicle's power cells, conduct repairs to the cabin, and allow for the colour customization of the vehicle. The Sea Truck can be entered using its roof-mounted hatch or through a door at the end of the vehicle when additional modules are installed, and can be exited the same way, using a ladder on the right-hand side of the cabin cabin or through the door to the rear. The Sea Truck's cabin is made up of titanium, lead and glass, along with wiring and a power cell. Law-wise, this makes the Sea Truck about the same toughness as Subnautica's Seamoth, as they are both made of the same key ingredients, titanium, lead and glass. This makes the Sea Truck's hull weaker than both the Cyclopses and the Prawn Suits, which are both made of plast steel, which is an ultra-strong metal alloy of titanium and lithium. The Sea Truck's cabin and each module towed has its own individual health pool, with the total health of the vehicle being displayed on the cabin's health meter although this only works for up to five towed modules. Interestingly, unlike all other Subnautica vehicles excluding the Snow Fox, the Sea Truck does not have an onboard AI to welcome or warn the crew of dangers, and will only give a warning when you're about to be crushed using the same voice module as the Seamoth. The Sea Truck has a standard speed of 9.18 meters a second, or roughly 20 miles per hour, or 33 kilometers an hour, which is reduced as more modules are installed, dropping to only 40% of its initial speed with four modules installed, to a measly 3.67 meters a second second, which is roughly equivalent to 8 miles per hour or 13 kilometers per hour, and that's the equivalent of going from just a tiny bit slower than the world's fastest pug to the average speed of a running chicken, and trust me, those are worlds apart. The Sea Truck has a standard crush depth of 150 meters, but this can be increased to a maximum of 1000 meters with the depth upgrades installed. It's interesting to note here that any modules attached to the Sea Truck are not affected by crush depth and will not be crushed if this limit is exceeded. The Sea Truck has up to 6 additional modules that can be towed, ranging from practical to to the recreational, and these can be attached manually by hand using the bars on each module, or by furiously reversing into them until they attach themselves. First on our list of Sea Truck additions is the Fabricator module. This contains a wall-mounted fabricator for on-the-go crafting of standard items, while also allowing for the construction of Sea Truck upgrades, and also comes with a small amount of built-in storage space. Failing to attach the Fabricator module for trips lasting longer than 8 hours will also clear the manufacturer of any hunger-related liability issues that may arise from the trip in a court of law. Next on our list of Sea Truck additions is the Aquarium module, which collects small creatures that come too close to it. These single-sheet nano-reinforced pieces of glass took many years of research to create, and allows for the studying of contained creatures in optimum conditions. Any creatures collected will be displayed within the module's two transparent aquariums, and these can be accessed by two small doors on the sides of the module. These fish tanks each have eight slots of space for storing all the aquatic critters you need. Everything small enough to fit inside the tank will be collected, apart from the newt fish, as this would probably eat everything else inside as it's a natural predator of most other creatures, and if it did somehow end up getting in there, the crew would have to take it out and turn it into fish and ships. The aquarium module has no off switch and will suck up everything in sight until its storage is full, and that includes penglings, but the PDA reassures us that this is done in a perfectly humane manner, and you can always trust Altera, right? Hey, wait a second, is that a piece of bacon? Ah! Can you guys hear me? Hello? Uh, hello? Is this thing on? Power restored. Ah, oh, here we go. Huh, now that that's out of the way. Third on our list of additional modules is the sleeper module, which contains a foldable bed, 
photo frame and a jukebox. The use of this module means that the Citra can be used by two people at a time, in shift patterns, with one sleeping and the other driving the vehicle. Although, if you detach this module while the other person is sleeping, they might develop an ever so slight case of the dead through oxygen deprivation. Moving back to the more practical side of the sea truck, we have the storage module which comes with a number of lockers of various sizes that can be labeled with custom labels, with an additional 72 slots of storage space being added. This storage module is most commonly used by researchers collecting samples or miners moving raw materials. Next, as the most requested addition to the sea truck by crews, we have the docking module which allows for the attaching of a prawn suit to the sea truck through a set of mechanical arms which automatically extend and attach themselves to the prawn keeping it secure. But it's important to note that the prawn will not charge when attached to the vehicle. This module must be placed at the end of a sea truck to allow for the docking and launching of the prawn suit. The module also removes the sea truck's rear door and replaces it with another exit hatch on the roof that can be accessed via a ladder. The prawn can be launched through the module's inbuilt control panel or will automatically be launched when a pilot enters it. Other internal features of this module are limited as most of the space is taken up by the external walls and their built-in structural supports. And our next topic was... Wait, 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 what's happening? Hello? Wait, no, 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 this was supposed to be my video, no! Luckily for me, the final possible module that can be added to the sea truck is the teleportation module, which allows a crew member to teleport to the sea truck by using the power of iron cubes and a tether tool. And with just a little bit of tinkering, it can also be used to remove a bacon cap from your aquarium. The tether tool allows for the navigating of space and time to teleport back to the sea truck in the blink of an eye. This teleportation effect is actually conducted by the iron cube itself, but human scientists have been unable to wrap their brains around how organic material can be disassembled and reassembled in this way yet. In addition to to depth upgrades, the sea truck can be upgraded with a number of modules to improve its speed and defensiveness. Installing an afterburn upgrade will give the vehicle a temporary speed boost at the cost of 6 energy, and this increases speed from roughly 9.18 meters a second to around 12.7 meters a second without any of the modules in tow. This increase will be less depending on how many modules are currently being towed by the sea truck, and once these afterburners have been used, they only 10 to 12 seconds to recharge before they can be used again. If the crew requires a more permanent speed boost, the sea truck can be upgraded with a horse horsepower upgrade which will increase the vehicle's speed when towing two or more modules. This increases overall speed by about 2 meters a second when compared to the standard speed without this upgrade installed. For example, with two modules towed, the sea truck moves at 6.14 meters a second as standard, and this is increased to 8.01 meters with this upgrade installed. It's important to note here that this upgrade will only begin to affect speed when two or more modules are towed, and has no impact before this point. Finally, the sea truck can be upgraded with a perimeter defense grid to improve its survivability. This upgrade creates an electric field around the vehicle when enabled, and gives a little electric shock to anything that tries to take a chunk out of you. It's also possible to create a larger discharge of energy if you hold down the charge button for an extended period of time, which will cost 7.5% of the sea truck's total power and will barbecue everything in range. And that's everything you need to know about the sea truck. I wonder what other space related modules or upgrades might be revealed in a future Subnautica game. Do you think we might see the sea truck added into the original Subnautica through a future update? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks to The Last Bacon for featuring on this video. And if you've ever wondered how fast the snow fox actually moves, then you should click right here to find out more. And I'll see you over there to tell you all about it.